All right, sir. Well, welcome. And uh, you are one of six candidates interviewing today to potentially be put forward as a as a nominee to yes, become sir. the next Ada County Sheriff. Yes. And the biggest county in the state of Idaho as far as population goes. Uh, what do you uh, What are you feeling, or what kind of ultimately made you think, "Hey, I want to maybe be the next sheriff of Ada right, so, County." Uh, yeah, absolutely correct. The, one of the largest. It is the largest agency in, in the state of Idaho. We have over uh, 750 plus employees. It's a big operation. Uh, what made me decide to run for sheriff is initially, I had just retired in December uh, of 20. Okay. Uh, our goal was to take a couple years off and then get involved with uh, the party and essentially make it a, a run for, for 2024 for the sheriff position. Okay. Um, you know, I've been with the sheriff's office for 27 years before my retirement. I, I love the sheriff, the people. Um, are phenomenal. Our HR department does a great job selecting the men and women of the agency. The agency itself is incredible, right? And uh, so my goal is to make sure we keep the agency moving forward in the right direction. We've uh, established a great reputation within the community. Um, people want to come to Ada County and be citizens of Ada County because of our way of life. And I think it's important that we maintain that lifestyle and continue our relationship with the community. That's the key to the success of the sheriff's office. You know, I've worked under three different sheriffs, and it seems like every time we get a new sheriff that comes in, the lobby gets painted, new signs are put up, new slogans. <laughs> but the foundation, the people of the agency, are what keeps our agency moving forward, and I want to make sure I'm a part of that. Okay. Uh, one of the biggest issues across the country right now is, is the issue of law enforcement. There's lots of discussion about use of force and interactions with the community. Uh, how do you see Ada County in, in that light? And do you think that there's things that Ada County needs, can and does, does need to do better? Or is it doing great the way that it is now? Yes, sir. So, perfect question. You know, there is a lot going across the country. Uh, you know, there's the, the defund the police movement, you know, Black Lives Matter movement. And uh, I, I strongly believe that because of our, our relationship with the community, whether it's in the contract cities of Eagle Star and CUNA, or it's in the unincorporated areas of, areas of Ada County, uh, we have been able to get the, the confidence of the people and that needs to maintain, be maintained. Uh, I think that our efforts need to continue with outreach for the community. Uh, for the less fortunate children, uh, you know, getting prepared for school, getting getting an opportunity to buy something at Christmas. I think that police need to be a part of the community and not only when it's time of an emergency or when need, when something bad happens, they also need to be uh, infused into the community when things are good so that people feel comfortable with their law enforcement. And I think that's the main reason why, you know, uh, the budget last year increased because of new employees and uh, we're actually trying to get a jail bond passed because of the number of uh, uh, inmates in the jail before COVID. I mean, we, we were running between uh, 1,040, 1,050, our jail capacity is 1,224. And uh, we had a couple days there, we were in the 1,100s. Uh, and the unfortunate thing is we don't have just, you can just plug people in the empty beds. You have a classification system that tells you only certain people in certain areas are allowed. So it kind of limits what you're able to do as far as movement of inmates. Our classification unit does a great job manipulating that system. And uh, so it's important that uh, the community gets behind us so that we don't end up in a lawsuit with, uh, like we had when I first started here, was the Webb versus Ada County because we were putting inmates in the law library on cots, stacking them uh, as, as many as we can get in there because we had nowhere else to put them. Okay. I think getting ahead of the problem, potential problem, is key to the sheriff's office. Having that big picture view is super important. And uh, I think that's why we need to uh, make sure that that relationship with the community allows us to do our job and keep the community we live a safe place to be. Okay. And finally, one of the questions that a, a lot of citizens have, uh, that our readers had online that when we were talking about the sheriff's candidates mm -hmm. is, what uh, what do you see as your role potentially in, in dealing with federal, the federal government? You know, there's a, a new administration now, a Democrat administration. It's a Republican state here in Idaho. Right. You know, how do you see your role as the sheriff in, in, in that uh, relationship, I guess? So as you know, the sheriff is the, the lead law enforcement officer in the county. Uh, typically, anytime federal agents or agencies want to come and, and enforce the law in Ada County, they partner with the sheriff to let us know where they're going or what they're doing. Um, you know, the federal system, uh, and the reason I, I hear that question quite a bit is that the question ends up being, are you a constitutional sheriff? Are you going to, uh, to come take our guns away? Which really concerns people. In my opinion, I hope it never comes to that day. Um, 
my opinion is I have a constitutional duty as a sheriff of Ada County to enforce the Constitution, which is right to bear arms, is the Second Amendment. Um, and I tell people uh, my focus is not to go after law-abiding citizens of the Ada County. If a mandate were to be made, which I, I don't believe I'm, I'm held to, um, the the focus of the sheriff's office of a mandate like that would come down would be for us to focus on the prohibited possessors of firearms, uh, the people that are they're felons, uh, people on probation who aren't allowed to have firearms, uh, people that are have been diagnosed with mental illness and for whatever reason aren't allowed to have that firearm as well, and then victims or suspects of uh, domestic violence uh, aren't allowed to have firearms as well. Our focus as an agency would be to make sure that the law abiding citizens are able to hold on to their guns and in our society is a safe society and our focus as a sheriff's office would be on the people that are not allowed to have the firearms and uh, we would work through that uh, together okay awesome anything else you want to say no i just I, uh you know i'm grateful for the opportunity i think the process itself has been super fair uh we're talking with chairman uh, victor miller um, i know everybody all the candidates fairly well i've worked with them in the past uh, their hearts in the right place um, and I, uh, I think the GOP has a great job here, a super important job to select, you know, three candidates to move those names forward and then ultimately it'll be up to the county commissioners, but um, they have good people to pick from and they have a tough job to do and, and you know, I wish them well and uh, Godspeed to them for making the right decision. Sure. Uh, awesome. Thank you so All right, much. Sir. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.